Government will take steps to ensure that the strong hand of criminal justice is used where it is needed to keep people safe, but not where it would be discriminatory or counterproductive. Tonight, the speech from the throne and Canada's promises to Indigenous people. We certainly didn't expect to see what we saw on Sunday. I don't think anybody did. And an anti-racism rally in Alberta now has the RCMP asking for the public's help. Good evening, welcome to APTN National News. I'm Melissa Ridgen. We begin tonight in Ottawa where the Canada's Governor General delivered the speech from the throne. In it, priorities are laid out for the next session of Parliament. Here's J.B. Pashagomskam with the highlights. The Governor General promised Canada will be taking action and addressing systemic barriers for Indigenous people. The throne speech was made up of four foundations, including fighting the pandemic and saving lives, support for people and businesses, building Canada back strong from the pandemic, and addressing inequalities. The fourth and final foundation of this plan is to stand up for who we are as Canadians. We cannot forget what has made us a country that is welcoming, a country that celebrates two official languages, that achieves progress on gender equality, walks the road of reconciliation, and fights discrimination of every kind. As part of their COVID-19 protection, Payette announced money for Indigenous schools and accelerating work on the calls to justice by the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. They also announced clean drinking water for Indigenous communities and to introduce legislation on the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People by the end of this year. They also said they will be redoubling their efforts to end systemic racism and the overrepresentation of Indigenous people in the justice system. The government will take steps to ensure that a strong hand of criminal justice is used where it is needed to keep people safe, but not where it would be discriminatory or counterproductive. The throne speech also promised enhancing police oversight committees, modernizing training over the use of force, and moving forward on RCMP reforms. They will also be co-developing legislative framework on First Nations policing as an essential service. In conclusion, Payette said protecting Canadians will be their top priority. The Prime Minister will be giving his address tonight at 6.30. Jamie Pashagumskum, AP10 National News, Ottawa. Thanks, Jamie. To Atlantic Canada now, where post-tropical storm Teddy made landfall earlier today in eastern Nova Scotia. Teddy arrived near Sheet Harbour, east of Halifax, at 8 a.m. local time. The storm is delivering another round of punishing winds and heavy rain, and at least one point left at least 18,000 people without power. Now an update on the land back resistance camps at Caledonia, Ontario. A Six Nations woman is being charged in co with arson in connection with the uh, ongoing protests set up there. 54-year-old Audra Telefer also faces charges of mischief, disobeying a court order and failure to comply. On advice from legal counsel, Telefer turned herself in to Ontario Provincial Police yesterday. Two court injunctions are still in effect and prohibit anyone from being on Mackenzie Meadows property, also known as 1492 Landback Lane. To date, Ontario Provincial Police have charged 23 people. The accused are scheduled to appear in court at a later date. We want to hear what you think about this or any of the stories that we bring you. Here's how you can continue the conversation. Send your emails to news at aptn.ca. You can find us online at aptnnews.ca and on youtube.com slash aptnnews. You can also follow APTN News on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more Indigenous news. Newly released modeling shows that Canada could hit between 150 to 155,000 COVID-19 cases by October 2nd and 9,300 deaths. The virus is now spreading at a growing rate in every province west of Atlantic Canada. The 478 new cases in Ontario yesterday was the province's highest number since May, while Quebec added 489 infections. And as the pandemic gains ground across much of Canada, the country's top doctor says the days ahead are crucial. Time is now. We're at a bit of a crossroads. If you manage to reduce those contacts and make some choices in terms of not going to big gatherings and, and, and some of these social events, you can manage this without a lockdown. 
Dr. Tam reminds the public that a surge in cases could over overwhelm the entire health care system. Well, Ontario recorded 335 new cases today, a drop of nearly 150 from Tuesday. And Quebec is reporting 471 new cases of COVID-19, along with four deaths. In Ontario, hospitals are feeling the effects of COVID-19 testing delays. Labs are reportedly overwhelmed with tens of thousands of tests to process every day, while slow results are leaving patients and staff in limbo. We're getting delayed diagnoses in the hospital. We can't clear people from isolation in the hospital. We can't send patients back to long-term care homes. And we can't get staff test results back in time for us to work. Hours-long lines at Ontario test centres have become a major problem in recent weeks. Some people are even being turned away, like Conservative leader Erin O'Toole, who had to go to Quebec to get a test. Johnson & Johnson announced it's starting the final stage of its vaccine trial in the United States. The company is hoping to enroll 60,000 adults in eight countries. It says it will take at least two months to see the initial results of the trial. This uh, vaccine candidate only requires one dose, unlike other candidates which require two. The company expects the first batches to be available for emergency use early next year. An update now on story out of about the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan President Glenn McCallum. He recently tested positive for the COVID-19 virus, but as Priscilla Wolf reports, there are some questions about what he did before those results came in. Like many of the organization's staff members, Métis Nation Saskatchewan President Glenn McCallum had himself tested for COVID-19. That was last Tuesday, September 15th. He then went back to work. On Friday, he was at an m and meeting with 28 people at a large hotel in the Prince Albert National Park. Around 4.30 Friday afternoon, he was told by Saskatchewan Health that he had the virus. AP10 National News has called the m and repeatedly for comment, but they have declined interviews. In a statement, the m and said, at the time of his test, he had no symptoms and was not advised to self-isolate. At the time, he also had no reason to believe that he had any contact with someone who was positive for COVID-19. According to Saskatchewan's chief medical officer, it appears that McCollum did not break any rules for people who don't have any symptoms. I'll comment on what all of us need to do in any case. So the instruction is that if you are asymptomatic and you are seeking testing for whatever reason obviously you don't have any symptoms you're seeking testing as long as you're not a close contact of a case you know you don't obviously have to isolate because you know you uh, are asymptomatic but you have to self-monitor so for example if you were at a place where there's a public service announcement or you have any other concerns you should self-monitor for two weeks the other people at the mns meeting friday have gone into self-isolation so have a number of other people who were at the municipal election events also attended by mccollum last week the owners of the hotel where friday's meeting was held closed down for deep cleaning they are expected to reopen this Friday. According to media reports, they want the m and to reimburse them for tens of thousands of dollars in lost revenue. Priscilla Wolf, AP10 National News, Saskatoon. Post-tropical storm Teddy that we told you about earlier in the newscast actually had a bit of a calming effect on the ongoing fishery dispute in southwestern Nova Scotia. But there has been some movement behind the scenes. Angel Moore joins us with the latest. Post-tropical storm Teddy has made it impossible to fish for the time being. This boat is certainly not going anywhere anytime soon. Yet despite the howling wind, it's quiet here compared to last weekend. When Sebenagadi First Nation Mi'kmaq lobster harvesters exercised their treaty right to fish for a moderate livelihood, commercial fishing vessels surrounded the Mi'kmaq boats and stole Mi'kmaq lobster traps. Support for the Mi'kmaq was swift. Nunavut Tungavik Incorporated says the government of Canada has spoken loudly in favor of reconciliation, but the essence of reconciliation is respect for the rights of all indigenous peoples. And in New Brunswick, the Wallistoquay chiefs say, we urge the Prime Minister to intervene and force DFO to fully agree and implement Aboriginal and treaty fishing rights. And Chief Rod Gugu of the Assembly of Nova Scotia Chiefs says discussion with governments are promising. As a result, they will not be looking to retaliate in other ways. 
The Mi'kmaq of Nova Scotia will not be prohibiting or obstructing those with a provincial moose license to conduct their harvest in the Cape Breton Highlands. We have no reason to escalate the situation further. Meanwhile, more supporters are expected to arrive at Sonyaville Wharf. Once the storm dies down, the fishing conflict is poised to resume. Angel Moore, APTN National News, Sonyaville Wharf. Coming up a little later in the show, our reporter Daryl Stranger will have a preview of season eight of Wentworth, set to premiere tomorrow night on APTN. Let her go, let her go. With a finger. Get off her. The show has gained a global audience since it first aired in 2013, and its Indigenous content has picked up over the last few years. Leah Purcell, better known as Rita Connors on the show, details what we can expect from this season, including the introduction of some new characters. Purcell touches on the show's Indigenous representation and her own heritage, and how important having a leading role as an Indigenous person is. As we all know, the true numbers uh, for First Nations peoples in prisons are high across the across the world. So, um, you know, that representation wasn't quite right when me and Radhi arrived. We said there's only two Indigenous women here where, you know, we know the numbers are way, way higher. But they really heard us and, 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 and took that on and wanted to, you know, wanted to, I guess, show um, not only Australia, the world, that we are listening and, and trying to find that diversity um, within within the characters and in our lead, lead characters too. Love her and love that show. Uh, it's time for us to take a break, but when we come back, counter-protesters show up at an anti-racism rally and police are now looking into assault charges. We'll tell you all about that after the break. First, here's tomorrow's weather forecast. To the East Coast, we got 17 in rain for St. John's, Halifax, 21 in sunshine. Cartwright, 12, and Rain, Nain, 8, and some showers there. St. Jovit, 21, in sunny skies. Uh, Saguenay, 14, and Rain. 23 for Peterborough, and some showers there. Sault Ste. Marie, 16 degrees. Sioux Lookout, 18, and sunshine. Big Trout Lake, 11, and sunny. Churchill, 12, sunshine. God's Lake, 13, and sunny skies. 23, and sunny for Winnipeg. 26, and sunshine for Brandon. Swift Current, 24 degrees, same with Regina, 23 in showers in Saskatoon. Uranium City and Stony Rapids, both rain and 11 degrees, 22 with a mix of sun and cloud for Meadow Lake. Welcome back. An anti-racism rally in Red Deer, Alberta last weekend was stopped before it began when a group of counter-protesters crashed the event. And now the RCMP are asking for the public's assistance to help in laying charges. Chris Stewart has more. You want to go? Let's right now. What was supposed to be a peaceful protest against racism in Red Deer this past Sunday quickly changed. Video captured by an attendee shows a group of men disrupting the rally. They started yelling, pushing, and some punches were thrown. Cheryl Jamie Baptiste is the head of Red Deer Against Racism. I've been um, discriminated in the past and even threatened, and I don't want to allow these hate groups to silence us. Red Deer RCMP say they knew about the planned rally, but did not arrive until after the violence began, before the event started. He says officers broke up the altercation. We certainly didn't expect to see what we saw on Sunday. I don't think anybody did. Red Deer Mayor Tara Veer was vocal in her support of the organizers. We unequivocally denounce violence. We unequivocally denounce racism in our community. Alberta's Justice Minister says he has been in contact with the RCMP. I have spoken to RCMP Deputy Commissioner Curtis Zabloki and reiterated the need to get to the bottom of this. Other rallies this summer around Red Deer have been peaceful. The RCMP are asking witnesses and victims to come forward. Chris Stewart, APTN National News, Edmonton. Organizers of a rally supporting what so it and people opposed to pipeline construction in northern British Columbia say that Facebook disabled hundreds of their accounts. But Facebook refutes the claim. In an email to APTN News, a Facebook spokesperson said that their system mistakenly removed these accounts and they've restored or lifted restrictions on the accounts involved. 
The rally is to be held next week. Coastal Gas Lake Pipeline is the target of this rally. The pipeline has the support of Indian Act banned councils along the route, but not hereditary clans who don't want it. The showdown over Ottawa's federal carbon tax continues in the Supreme Court today. Indigenous leaders, special interest groups in several provinces are contesting the Liberals' climate plan, saying it is, its imposition is constitutional. It's the second day of hearings in three separate appeals. Courts in Saskatchewan and Ontario have ruled the federal legislation is constitutional, while Alberta's Court of Appeal said it's not. Health researchers in Manitoba are reporting higher numbers of people with type 2 diabetes. Uh, high blood sugar amounts in this type of diabetes can lead to serious side effects like blindness, heart disease, or amputation of toes and even legs. And the number of Indigenous children at risk is even higher than non-Indigenous Manitobans. CTV's Mike Arsenault brings us this story. Roughly 109,000 Manitobans have type 2 diabetes, and that number has been growing. Dr. Chelsea Ruth, researcher with the Manitoba Center for Health Policy, says type 2 diabetes develops when the insulin your body makes to control your blood sugar doesn't work well enough and your blood sugar levels get very high. And that high sugar in your bloodstream leads to the complications that we hear of with diabetes, such as heart disease, kidney disease, blindness, and uh, limb amputation. The Manitoba Center for Health Policy released the type 2 diabetes in Manitoba report. The study looked at rates of type 2 diabetes in the province and if people with the illness get the services they need. The report shows the disease in Manitoba has been on the rise in younger people. And today, 50% more children are being diagnosed than they were 10 years ago. When the younger people get diabetes, the more likely they are to influence the next generation. And it, it just keeps getting out of control and becomes costlier and costlier to society. The study showed that First Nations children are 25 times more likely to be newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes than all other Manitoba children. The report says systemic racism and colonialism are contributing factors to the higher rates in those communities by limiting their access to health services, the quality of education, and prospects for employment. We know the challenges around food security for First Nations or remote communities. We know the challenges around access to health. And we know that racism exists in, in some of our institutions or systems across Canada. The report says there's a need to support community-led initiatives, especially in First Nations communities. It says people with type 2 diabetes need to be diagnosed earlier and receive higher quality of care. Screening for type 2 diabetes should happen at a younger age, and young adults with the disease need to be better supported to access health care services. Access to safe recreational opportunities, food security, addressing poverty. These are not failures of the individual. These are failures of our society as a whole. Mike Arsenault, CTV News, Winnipeg. Time for another break, but when we come back, we've got Wentworth actor Leah Purcell talking about the new season coming up right here on APTN. First, here is a peek at a story that we're working for you on the days to come. The Casca and Naha Dene have used this pristine area for centuries. Permanently settled by the federal government in the late 1950s, Nahani Butte is now home to roughly 100 people. Look, over here. This week, APTN National News tours one of the smallest and most remote communities in Denende, Northwest Territories. To northern Alberta, we have 14 in Fort Chip with some showers, 17 in Rain and Grand Prairie. Edmonton, 20 with some showers, same with Lethbridge, 19 in Rain in uh, Calgary. Kamloops, some showers and 20 degrees. Campbell River, 17 in cloudy skies. East Lake, rain and 12. Some sunshine for Fort Nelson, 16 degrees. Mix of sun and cloud in Dawson City and 15. Old Crow, snow and 5. Norman Wells, Wrigley and Wati, all showers and 11 degrees. Trout Lake, sunshine and 15. Colville Lake, showers and 10. Tuck to Tuck, 6 and some cloud. Baker Lake, 10 and sunny. Repulse Bay, 0 clear skies. Arctic Bay, some snow and 1 degree. Igloolik, 0 and mostly sunny. Welcome back. A group of Manitobans took to the streets Tuesday to raise awareness for those struggling with addiction.
Native Addictions Council of Manitoba held its annual sobriety walk. The organization says it's important to remind people that they're not alone in their journey to sobriety. It says the pandemic has led to higher addiction rates and it's more important now than ever to support those who are struggling. We're walking for anybody that needs us to be there for them. Um, we've all been through it one way or another. We have brothers and sisters, we have family members. Everybody in this beautiful world of ours is going through pain, especially during COVID. Season 8 of Wentworth premieres tomorrow night right here on APTN and it's sure to provide plenty of drama, laughs and tears as the season picks up right where season 7 left off. Daryl Strangest gives us a preview. Beautiful morning. View's all right, but I'm going stir crazy. I need to call my sister. Season 8 of the multi-award winning drama Wentworth returns with 10 new episodes packed with rivalries, unlikely allegiances, friendships and power struggles. Wentworth has grown exponentially since its inception back in 2013, focusing more on Indigenous heritage and representation in recent years. Something Leah Purcell, who plays Rita Connors on the show, says was a key point in her joining the show. I'm a Gawagungri, Waka Waka Murray woman, so I'm from Queensland, that's in the, the north of the country. Part of, um, I guess, luring me to the role in the production was that um, we would focus on um, uh, my Indigenous heritage and Radawoy Hick, who plays my sister, and that we could collaborate on that so that we felt that we had control of our storyline and made sure that we were authentic to our mobs and our people, and we wanted to get it right because it was a representation. The show's premise of women in prison with Indigenous main characters is an example of art imitating life. In Purcell's native Australia, Indigenous people make up most of the prison system, and many still face racism, much like here in Canada and around the world. It is a global problem with our First Nations people, um, and, and what's wonderful about this time, I think, is there's a lot of young people coming through who are technically savvy and our voices and and what's strong is that the movement the cause there's still fight and there's still fire in our bellies and you know and that's so important for us you know it took 200 plus years for them to destroy us but we're but we're coming back and that's across the world as for what viewers can expect from season eight purcell says there will be some new surprises there's fire in everyone's bellies of course, there's going to be a bit of biffo. Um, of course, there's there's a beautiful love story. We've got new characters coming in. They're exciting. There's there's a young generation. They're holding the storyline, um, and and some of our favourite Australian female actors have have, have graced us. Um, it's action packed, and um, it, it's it's once again it's still the wild ride that Wentworth is that everyone loves. No, Luke, let her go. Luke. Or the finger. Get off her! You can catch the season eight premiere of Wentworth right here on APTN tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, Mountain huh? and Central. Daryl Stranger, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Well, that is your midweek news. You can always find more on our website, aptnnews.ca, if you've missed anything. I'm Melissa Ridgen. We leave you tonight with scenes from the University of Alberta's Botanical Gardens. Have a great night.